So our goal today is to be able to compare and contrast DNA and RNA. We don't know what those are yet, but also to talk about transcription. So proteins are going to be made in two different steps. Sometimes we've talked about baking cookies as an example of making proteins or parts of the cell. And if we think about baking cookies, we have the part where we make the dough and we mix all the ingredients. And then we have the part where we bake them, kind of two separate things. There's two separate things that happen to make proteins. And we're going to talk about the first one today. So the first thing I need you to do um, at your desk, okay, or you can also look at the screen in a second, is we're going to be looking at a picture of DNA versus RNA. But first, let me give you some clues about why we're talking about DNA and RNA. So here's our problem. The DNA is in the nucleus, okay? And the DNA has to get the instructions to the ribosome. The ribosome is where we're going to make the proteins, all the little polka dots. But neither of them can move. The DNA can't move. It's stuck in the nucleus. And the uh, ribosome can't move. So how are we going to get it there? That's our problem. We need to use a messenger molecule, kind of like when we just did this activity where you were in the hallway and you had a code, okay? The code couldn't move, the people in the classroom couldn't move, but you had to send a person to get that message. So we need a messenger. That messenger is called RNA. So that's why we're talking about RNA today, okay? So take a look at the picture on your table. It's a half sheet, okay? It is the same thing, same picture here. And I want you to talk with your partner about the differences you see between DNA and RNA. So we can see from this picture, there's a lot of differences and we're gonna be writing down those differences. So in your notes, you have a chart. I need you to write DNA on the side, top side of one chart and RNA on the other side. And we're gonna write down the differences that we saw in that picture. So the first big difference is that DNA is double-stranded and RNA is single-stranded. So DNA is a double helix where RNA is a single helix. One strand versus two. They're still a helix because they're twisted. So helix means twisted. So they're both showing that they're twisted molecules. So that's why we call them a helix. Next up, they have different sugars, okay? So deoxyribose is the sugar in DNA. Ribose is the sugar in RNA. Deoxyribose is missing that OH, deoxy, it's missing the oxygen, whereas ribose has it. We can remember this because DNA and deoxyribose both start with D, e, whereas RNA and ribose both start with R. All right, we know they have different base letters. So DNA has A's, T's, C's, and G's. RNA does not have a T. RNA has a U instead, the uracil base. What letter do you think U matches with? A. U is kind of like a T. It's just different. So because T matches with A, U is going to match with A. And then where they're found is different. So DNA is found only in the nucleus. It can't leave. RNA is found everywhere. It can go in the nucleus. It can be found other places. So it's found everywhere. All right, so here are differences between DNA and RNA. And now that we know that, we're gonna talk, you already highlighted this, but we're gonna talk about what are the steps to making a protein. So transcription, okay, is our, set of steps we're gonna be talking about. 
So I need you to turn the page. And I want you to take a look at these pictures, okay? Here are the pictures just on this first page, these four pictures. And I want you to talk at your table about what you see happening in these pictures. You don't have to know all the words, but just tell somebody at your table what you see happening. What we're gonna do, now that you've talked about this picture, is we are going to write down what exactly is happening in each of these pictures as our notes of how the proteins are made, okay? So the first bullet point we have that you're gonna write down is not very exciting because you already know it. DNA is in the nucleus. So go ahead and write down DNA in the nucleus. We know it can't leave the nucleus, it's a double helix. It's got the code, so the code is in the nucleus. So we know that DNA is in the nucleus. In the next picture, we can see the DNA splitting apart. So the DNA strands are gonna separate, just like kind of how we saw in our last unit of DNA replication, where the DNA strands split in order to make new copies of DNA. Here though, we don't wanna make DNA. If we make DNA, it's not gonna be able to take our message to the ribosome because DNA has to stay in the nucleus. So instead, we're gonna to need to make something else, okay? So the DNA strands separate, we're gonna to need to make a different molecule. This is where that RNA comes in that we're going to have to create. So in our next picture, we see that RNA is being created. Well, remember, we need a helper molecule in order to create RNA, okay? This helper molecule is called RNA polymerase. If it ends in ACE, does anyone remember what that means? It's a... Uh, sugar is ose. ACE is... Enzyme. enzyme. Yeah, it's an enzyme. So it's a helper molecule. It's going to make something called messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is called mRNA for short because there's different types of RNA. So we have this molecule making this other messenger molecule, this enzyme. And then after it's made, remember our whole goal here is to take the message from the nucleus and get it to the ribosome. So if we take a look at this picture here, I just have this really blurry picture showing us making this RNA molecule. So the blue is our DNA. What letters does the DNA have for its bases? Yeah. A, C, T, and G. What's different about the RNA? What letter can't it have? T, so it has what instead? U, okay? So the RNA is the pink one, and we see it being built here, okay? So that's why I include this really blurry picture that's kind of annoying to see. All right, so now that we know the mRNA is gonna be made, it's gonna leave the nucleus, and it's gonna go to the ribosome because the ribosome is going to be making the proteins. So we got the get got to get the message to the ribosome so it can make proteins. So now that we've got that written down, these are the steps. I've got a little um I believe what I have next is a little video clip. Okay? This video clip is going to show us what it's like for transcription um, to happen here. So I'm gonna hit play. Here is a cell, the basic unit of all living tissue. In most human cells, there is a structure called the nucleus. The nucleus contains the genome. In humans, the genome is split between 23 pairs of chromosomes. Each chromosome contains a long strand of DNA tightly packaged around proteins called histones. Within the DNA are sections called genes. These genes contain the instructions for making proteins. When a gene is switched on, an enzyme called RNA polymerase attaches to the start of the gene. It moves along the DNA, making a strand of messenger RNA out of free bases in the nucleus. The DNA code determines the order in which the free bases are added to the messenger RNA. This process is called transcription.
Before the messenger RNA can be used as a template for the production of proteins, it needs to be processed. This involves removing and adding sections of RNA. The messenger RNA then moves out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm. Protein factories in the cytoplasm, called ribosomes, bind to the messenger RNA. The ribosome reads the... All right, so it got cut off there. And the reason it got cut off is because we're only talking today about the first steps. There's more steps to this, okay? In that video, you might have heard them say um, that this is called, it has a name, these steps are called transcription. So what I want you to do is turn your sheet sideways. We're still on that first page. We're not, turn it sideways and we're gonna write transcription. So just how you see it up on my screen here, because that's the name for this process. In transcription, if we start with the top cell, we see the DNA. If we look at what we made at the bottom or on the left-hand side, we see we're making messenger RNA. So transcription is just taking the DNA message, the information from the DNA, and turning it into messenger RNA. Where is this happening? Where do we make the messenger RNA and what part of the cell do we see in the picture there? Where is it being made? In the nucleus. So this happens in the nucleus and that's what I want us to make sure we include. And that's because the DNA can't leave. DNA cannot leave the nucleus. So it has to be made there, okay? So let's do a little practice in a second. I still see pencils writing. I know it's a lot of information. So we're gonna practice our um, DNA, changing DNA into messenger RNA in one minute here. So let's go ahead and practice here. We have a DNA strand. If we wanna make messenger RNA, we've gotta match up the letters. So the messenger RNA, the reason it has the instructions is because it has the opposite matching letters. This isn't in your notes packet. This is just well, for us to do. So what letter is gonna match with C? G, yeah. So C with G, what's gonna match with T? A. a, okay, we got another T, so that's an A. What about G? C. C. Now, A. U. Yeah, remember how we said RNA couldn't have T? So anytime we wanna write a T, like right here for this A, we're gonna write a U instead. And then T with A, right? Okay, let's do one more. So G is gonna match with what letter? C, C with? G, A with U, T with A, C with G, and A with U. Okay, good. What I want you to do is flip to this page in your notes packet. It's a couple pages back. It's below a circle chart. So here's what we're going to do. I need you to fill in the DNA strand. Remember, DNA is double-stranded, so we've got these two lines at the top showing our DNA. You know how to fill in DNA. DNA has A's, T's, C's, and G's. So what I need you to do is fill in this top row. For example, T is gonna match with what letter? A. And A with, because it's DNA, what is it gonna match with? T. So go ahead and fill in that top row. So going across, we should have G, G, T, C, T, T, C, okay? Because DNA has A's, T's, C's, and G's. Now, this next part is important. Do you notice how we have a gene strand and a copy strand on our DNA? 
The gene one is the one that has the information. The other one's just a copy of it. It has the matching letters. We want the information from the gene strand to go into our messenger RNA. So we are always going to match our messenger RNA letters with the gene strand. So because the gene strand is here, we're gonna match T with a letter for RNA. Now remember, RNA can't have what letter? T, it has to have a U. So in this beginning one, T is gonna match with what? A, and A with U. So see if you can fill in those letters. So we should have G, G, U, C, U, U, C, okay? Now, we're gonna go to the next example. So A, U, G, G, U, C, U, U, C. We're gonna go to the next example. In this example, notice the gene and the copy strand are in different spots. That's okay, okay? So we're first gonna make our other DNA strand. We know how to do this because A's, T's, C's, and G's are gonna match with it, okay? So the first thing I need you to do is write down the DNA letters that are gonna match with it, A's, T's, C's, and G's. So here's what we should have going across A, T, G, A, A, G, T, C, C, T. Now, here's the trick part. Remember, it's our gene strand that has the information, so our mRNA is always going to match with our gene strand because the gene has the information. So T, we're gonna use the T at the top from the gene strand. T is gonna match with what? A, so this is gonna be A. A is gonna match with U, all right? So fill in those letters. So here's what we should have then. We should have G, um, A, A, G, U, C, C, U. What do we notice about the copy strand and the RNA? What do we notice? The same except for what? The U's. The U's are T's. 